Back in the day before technology and social media became such an important part of our daily lives, making friends wasn't as easy as it is now. Most of the pretty women I saw in a day, I would never see again, mostly because I didn't have the balls to walk up to them and get to know them. At the same time, I was what you called a socially awkward person and I had to go through some other means to get to know people. But then suddenly came Facebook, an app where people can make friends and find out almost everything they wanted to know about someone else, all with a simple friend request. But it wasn't what I thought it'd be as my experience with Facebook completely changed my life. My name is Timothy Hansen and the year was 2007. Facebook had just launched three years prior and was blowing up in 2006 as people had started preferring it to MySpace. I had been quite skeptical about joining at first as I wasn't a huge fan of sharing my information online, but I eventually caved and decided to create a Facebook account. If I remember correctly, my first few suggestions were all people in New York and I spent a while just going through their profiles wondering if I should send a friend request and that's when I saw her, Annabelle Tate. She was simply the most beautiful woman I had seen, but what intrigued me the most about her was her profile. It was full of pictures of her and her friends at parties, going on vacations, and in general, just living her best life. I spent a while thinking about what to do before eventually sending her a friend request. She accepted in about two hours and texted, Hi, I'm Annabelle. The conversation from that point flowed as Annabelle was a very easygoing person, although now that I think about it, I believe it was just the comfort of being behind a screen. We talked for about a week online, majorly about me as she asked a lot of questions about my past and life in general. I eventually decided to ask her to meet in person. Do you want to meet up sometime? She replied, sure, where do you want to meet? We could get dinner tomorrow night. I'm not in the city right now, but I get back tomorrow, so maybe the day after? Sure. I went out the next day to the restaurant we had agreed to meet. She wasn't there yet, so I decided to text her and ask her if everything was okay. Is everything all right? I'm on my way, just running a bit late. I waited for about 10 more minutes, and then I saw her. The first thing I noticed was Annabelle was a lot skinnier than she looked on her profile. She also had bags under her eyes that she had tried to cover up with makeup. She walked up to me and sat at the table before smiling and saying, Hey. I smiled back and replied, you look tired. Are you sure you're okay? She laughed as she picked up the menu and called for the waiter. Annabelle was just as relaxed and easygoing as she was online. We talked about a lot that night, but for the most of the night, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong with Annabelle. So I said, listen, are you sure you're all right? If you're not up for this, we could hang out at my place where I could take you home. She took a while to stare at her food before looking up and replying, I like the idea of going back to yours. So we got the check and left. We kept talking as we walked to my apartment. We walked in and I told Annabelle to make herself comfortable while I made her a drink. I made her a gin and tonic and got back from the kitchen to see Annabelle standing playing with her thumbs as if she was nervous. So I said, I know you said everything's all right, but are you sure you're fine? She shook her head and replied. Look, Tim. You're a really nice guy, but if we're going to go any further in whatever this is, there's something you need to know. I walked closer to her as my mind raced as to what she was about to say. You've probably already noticed I look different from my profile. Well, that's because I've not been active for a while on that account. And the reason I've not been active on that account is that <laughs> I've been really sick. And life's been so shit lately. I don't know how much longer I have or if I even have time at all. <laughs> she was crying now, but all I could think about was how her profile managed to paint a completely fake picture of who she was. She continued with, My family's been telling me it isn't the end and... I should still try to be me, and that's why I accepted your friend request. <laughs> I just don't want you to get your hopes up. <laughs> she kept crying, so I reached out and gave her a hug. 
She was so close to me. She felt so good and she smelled so good. So good. It's fine, Annabelle, I said before placing my hand on her cheek. Some stupid disease won't take someone as beautiful as you from the world. No, that wouldn't be fair. Her facial expression changed as she tried to slip away from the hug, but I tightened my grip, continuing with, I really didn't ever think it'd be this easy to get a woman as beautiful as you alone in my home. It's usually so hard having to follow them around or just taking one I don't know anything about with them crying and screaming the whole time. I won't ever forget the feeling I got seeing the look of realization on Annabelle's face as I spoke. The worry and fear were nothing like I had seen before. She tried hitting me, but there was no use as I dragged her and held her down on the couch, and that's when she began screaming. I grabbed her throat and pressed down so hard, saying, Stop screaming, Annabelle. Don't worry. You won't have to bother about how much longer you have to live. Her struggle continued, but not for long. I had my way with her as she passed out and died. So there you have it, officer. Annabelle Tate was my first time using Facebook, and my, what an experience she was. You're a sick man, Timothy. I'll make sure you spend the rest of your days behind bars. Say what you will, officer, but if you ask me, I didn't do anything wrong. All I did was ask to be their friend, and they agreed. All I truly wanted were some friends. You raped and killed 19 women using Facebook, and God knows how many before that. And you say all you wanted were friends? Well, you won't have to worry about that anymore. You'll soon find out what happens to your kind in prison. I'm sure a lot of people would like to be your friend. I hope so. People like you don't deserve compassion. Well, if that's true, officer, I guess it's a good thing I found Facebook. It was my freshman year and I had just moved into my new dorm room that I shared with two other senior girls, Alice and Veronica. Our dorm room was like a three-bedroom apartment with two bathrooms we shared. As it was my first year, I partied at every chance I got. Alice and Veronica were pretty introverted and hardly went out to any parties. We weren't the best of friends, but I knew my roommates enough to know they loved staying in the dorm and watching movies on weekends. On one such night, I went out to a frat party I was invited to by my classmates. I never really returned before 2 a.m., so most of the nights when I came back from such parties, both of my roommates were fast asleep. That night, too, I returned at around 1 a.m. I was hoping that the two ladies would be sleeping, but when I walked into our living room, the sofa was occupied by a middle-aged man. He looked as if he had been sleeping there before I entered, but now he was awake and looking at me. He had the duvet I recalled to be Veronica's up to his neck and I could only see his face. His eyes were a little red. I remembered Alice mentioning the other day that Veronica's older cousin was going to live with us for a while. But she did not mention how old this cousin was but she did not mention how old this cousin was going to be and if it was a male cousin or a female. I assumed the man in the living room to be her cousin. I grabbed a water bottle and went into my room. All the time I was in the living room, the man kept on staring at me. I usually do not lock my bedroom door, but this time a small part of me forced me to lock it. Soon, I was laying in my bed watching some YouTube videos, which eventually led me to sleep. I woke up to a continuous scratching sound on my bedroom door. It was like a dog or an animal with big nails was scratching on it. But none of my roommates nor I had a dog or any pet animal. When I tried to focus and listened carefully, 
I could hear faint footsteps walking in front of my door with the scratching noise coming periodically. My gut instinct told me to text my roommates, and I did. I texted. Guys, someone is scratching on my door. Could it be your cousin Veronica? I did not receive any reply from them, so I decided to stay in my room and wait for Veronica to take her cousin away. But that did not happen, even after half an hour and the scratching continued. I tried calling my friends several times, but they did not pick up. Finally, I gathered the courage to press my ear against my bedroom door to gauge the situation, and I could hear the faint ringing of one of my roommate's phones across the hall. The man on the couch, or my roommate's cousin, was still out there pacing in the hallway in front of my room. I stood right by my door until the footsteps stopped. I dared to open my door, and as soon as I peeked out, something hard hit my head and I fell to the ground. It was as if he was waiting for an opportunity to attack me. The last thing I remember before everything blacked out was the face of the man who I thought was Veronica's cousin. A few hours later, I woke up in a police station. I was sleeping on a small bed, and as I gained consciousness, both of my hands were cuffed to the bed. One nurse shouted that I was awake, and a doctor stepped in to check my vitals. As soon as he left, two cops and one detective entered the room and asked me why I killed my roommates. I was shocked, would be an understatement to define how I felt. Firstly, it was heartbreaking that my roommates had died, but being accused of their murder was insanity. I was the one who was attacked, so I tried telling the cops and the detective what had happened to me and how the strange man who posed to be Veronica's cousin attacked me. After hearing my story, the cops claimed that I was lying and that I had killed my roommates. According to the cops and the detective, I returned to my dorm around 11 p.m., not around 1 a.m., as I claimed. I was so intoxicated that I had no clue what I was doing. Then I got into an argument with one of my roommates. This argument led to a big fight, which made me so angry that I picked up the kitchen knife and killed both of my roommates in their sleep a few hours later. And then on the way back to my room, I fell unconscious on the floor as I was drunk from the party. To prove their point, they asked me to take a closer look at my hands. As I looked at my hands, I could clearly see the light shade of red on my hands, and there was dark red color under my fingernails. It was blood. Probably the blood of my roommates. They said I was the murderer. I was the one who killed my roommates. But in the six months I had lived with them, we had never fought. So what would have me so angry that I killed them? Furthermore, the cops claimed that they found the murder weapon, the kitchen knife, near my unconscious body in our dorm. It had my fingerprints on it. Moreover, the man who I thought was Veronica's cousin sleeping on the sofa of our living room did not exist. I'm confused about whether he was really there or whether he was a fragment of my imagination to cope with what I had done. I do not think I am capable of such a heinous crime. Am I being framed or did I really kill my roommates? And if I didn't, then who was the man in the living room?
I firmly believe that I am being framed. It's an elaborate plan by the man who really killed my roommates and attacked me. Plus, why are none of them checking my call and text records to see that I had texted my friends the night before? Will I ever be free from this tragedy? Or will I be framed for a crime I think I did not commit? How do I make sense of this mess? Can you help me, please? Facebook has been around since the early 2000s. Anyone and everyone has gotten on Facebook to connect with loved ones or make new friends. There are groups you can join. Some families make bulletins to arrange reunions and other parties. You can create events, invite people to those events, and they can RSVP to the event. Facebook has been good and convenient for many things, but in the last years, it's come out with its own dating network that is completely free to join. I'm Diana, and this is what made me delete my Facebook account. I had just gotten through a rough breakup with a man I thought I was going to marry. It had been a couple of years, and I was just starting to get to know the new me. My best friend and roommate Stephanie was encouraging me to get back in the dating world. One day, we were having our morning coffee together as we usually did before work, when she told me about Facebook dating. You should try it out. It could be fun. I'm not joining a dating app, Steph. I can't afford it, and I always find the creepy guys, so essentially, I'll be paying to get grossed out. See? But that's the best part, Dee. It's completely free. You can join and back out anytime you want. I suppose it's worth a shot. Okay, I'll check it out. That night after work, I got into a relaxing bubble bath, got on my phone, and set up my Facebook dating profile. I went through my account picking out my cutest pictures and posted them onto my dating profile. Once I was happy with how I put myself out there, I finished my bath and got settled into bed. Before I put my phone on the charger for the night, I had already gotten a flood of messages. But one guy in particular caught my eye. His name was Clark. And he was as gorgeous as he was sophisticated. Most messages I got were like, Hey, beautiful. Hi, sup, etc. But Clark's message read, Hello, Diana. I'm Clark. How are you doing this evening? It was so personal, and it told me that I was likely the only girl that he was talking to, because we all know that the guys with the driest greetings are the ones who have messaged 50 other women, and they just want to hook up. I happily responded with a personal greeting of my own. Hello, Clark. It's so nice to meet you. I'm doing well. How about yourself? It's nice to meet you too, Diana. I'm well, thank you. At the risk of being forward, and I know this is going to make me sound like any other guy out here, but we all know why we're here. And I want to say I think you are absolutely beautiful. His honesty was so refreshing, and it was charming me by the second. I wound up talking to him for hours before falling asleep. I woke up the next day with a smile on my face, and I told Stephanie all about him. For the next few days, he was all I could think about, and we chatted every single night. I learned a lot about him. He started his own company, and it took off really fast, so he was well-to-do. I doubted a lot of that stuff at first, but looking at his Facebook profile, I noticed that he was legitimate. He had over a thousand friends, and his pictures easily got 300 likes and dozens of comments. 
I had no reason to doubt any of it. I told him I worked at a burger joint part-time and was in school to be a nurse, which was all true. I wasn't only taken by his honesty and genuine interest. He wasn't pushing to hook up, but he really wanted to meet me. In fact, he was a bit pushy about meeting me, but he insisted it was because I was just so beautiful. He wanted to see if what he felt for me was real. My broken heart fell for that. We agreed to go out to dinner and see the new romantic comedy that just came out. Stephanie was helping me get ready, and I had butterflies. So, where is he taking you? That Italian restaurant that just opened by the theater? He's well off. He pushed to meet you because he feels strong about you. And that's where he's taking you? I don't see a problem with it. He seems to really like me, and I like him. Why not meet? Doesn't his urgency seem like a red flag to you? Uh, no. I honestly thought it was, but I was too into him to be willing to admit that to myself. I convinced Stephanie that everything was okay, and she told me to be careful. Clark and I agreed to meet at the restaurant, and as I was driving there, those butterflies got stronger, to the point that it was making me feel sick. I pulled up to the restaurant and went inside. I told the host I was meeting Clark. This man was crusty, wrinkly, and he smiled at me with teeth so yellow he could spit butter. I sat down in front of him, and everything inside me was telling me to just walk out. But I didn't want to make a scene. I figured I could just get through this dinner and be gone. I offered a friendly smile and spoke to him. Hi, Clark. He let out a hissing giggle and shook his head. Actually, it's Kevin. Oh, well, Kevin, I assumed you were Clark. I must have the wrong table. He shot a death glare at me, balled his hands into fists, and pounded on the table. You're not going anywhere, bitch. You wanted to meet me so bad? Well, here I am. Feeling a self-loathing amount of embarrassment, I stood up and went to leave. I went to go get in my car, but as I grabbed the handle, my hand began to tingle, and I felt very faint. I got into my car and called Stephanie. She told me that I was likely being sex trafficked and to go to the police, and she would meet me there. I was given medical attention, and Stephanie stayed with me while I reported the incident. It appeared that I was very lucky to have been so close to the police station. It turns out, the man I was talking to named Clark was the one who spiked my doorknob with a drug. Kevin was a sex trafficker and he was not working alone. Clark had many social media profiles and a lot of the accounts he was friends with turned out to be bots to make him look trustworthy. Kevin was the man who would meet women, scare them off, and Clark would follow them and snatch them when the drug knocked them out. I should have listened to my gut that something wasn't right. I encourage you all that if something feels wrong, it 100% is, and to listen to that. I was so freaked out by the incident that I deleted my Facebook account. Be careful, folks. Traffickers are everywhere.